Good evening. It's the story that is still going on this week, even tonight, as residents of one Florida town are afraid to go to sleep in their beds for fear a new sinkhole could swallow them up. We'll have more details on that tragic story later, but first, a different kind of worry. That's right, Elizabeth. What if it doesn't lie underneath your home, waiting and hiding? Instead, it lives right next door or down the block. The neighbors from hell. Matt Gutman went on the trail of people you may not want living next to your home sweet home. The saying goes that good fences make good neighbors. But how do you build a fence high enough to shield you from this kind of behavior? As seen in this local news piece. How many fires have you had in your house? Three! Talking out kid. Okay, uh-huh. It's a big one! Yeah! It is a big one! Nut job! Kathy Hesterberg says her family had been living peacefully in this suburb outside St. Louis for 30 years. That was until last fall, when a SWAT team descended on her next door neighbor's home, suspecting drugs. We heard this loud boom. There was SWAT officers, police officers coming out from between the houses. The man they were looking for? 48-year-old Greg Jennings, an avid hunter and the owner of a local tree trimming business. So let me get this straight, he blames you? Well, he actually put the blame on my mom. Kathy says Jennings accused her mother of tipping off police. He said that she tipped off a police officer that lives down the, the block. Starting that day, she says he became belligerent and bizarre. This is what he made. A noose in her front yard. What the hell is he doing? He started burning fires in the backyard. The smoke was just awful. You couldn't breathe. Deer carcasses beside the driveway and in the trash cans. I mean, you never knew what you were going to come home to. Are those okay? They're both working now. So she installed security cameras to document the antics. He made it a point night after night after night to prance around out there right on the property line. Each night, his behavior got more erratic. The cameras are out in plain sight. You'd figure they might serve as a deterrent, but not for Greg Jennings. According to Kathy, that's him in the dead of night, strolling the grounds in his underwear. And here, that's right, he's wearing a box on his head. So what should you do if you have a nasty neighbor? Don't show the pain. Calling the police all the time, uh, they're getting the reaction that they want. They're going to keep doing it. And what do you do if not even the police can help you? Kathy says she called them dozens of times. If we don't have a specific law violation, we can't do anything other than try and mediate between the two parties. It's a fine line between being a neighborly nuisance and winding up in handcuffs. Jennings seems to know exactly how to navigate that gray area. The limits of the law don't help, you know, victims. It covers bullies. Would you say he's a bully? Oh, yeah. And that can hurt, says Shark Tank's Barbara Corcoran. She knows real estate. The problem with a nasty neighbor is not only that you've had to live with them for four or five years, but when you want to get rid of them and have to sell your home, you have to disclose it. And so the damage to your home is enormous. But if since all that way, media attention... You're being a punk right now. You're being a punk. Kathy tells us she and Jennings were working towards a truce. So we figured we'd ask Greg Jennings his side of the story, and we left a letter and waited Mr. all Jennings? day for him. Hello? Don't it took a so few attempts. Your neighbors say you've been tormenting them, but I want to hear your side of the story, sir. Before he finally sort of responded. Leave my property, I'm calling the police. Mr. Jennings, I just, I will absolutely leave your property, but I'm sure you... Turns out he didn't like company on his side of the fence. Safely leave my property right now. Go away or we're calling the police. Okay, okay. We left the property, but he called the police anyway. Ironically, it turns out, he had just been slapped with felony drug charges. But a thousand miles away, in sunny Miami, there was another landscaper allegedly making his neighbor's lives a bed of thorns. What's amazing is that this is your house, and that's his house right across the street. That's correct. That's correct. Francisco Torres says his feud with this man, Mitchell Agelko, started two years ago. Torres had fired Agelko as his landscaper. Big mistake. So, Torres says he installed a $70,000 security system. He even quit his job to monitor it full time, hoping to catch Agelko red handed. Witness what he says is the ultimate landscaper's revenge lawn aside.
Launch a Gelco's white truck driving by Torres's lawn. A mystery liquid squirts out the window. Torres says the grass died suddenly and uh, never like came back. Because there is so much poison that has been going through that uh, there is no way any grass will grow. Exhibit B, a Gelco's dogs roaming on Torres's property, followed by a frat house classic, a Gelco allegedly throwing eggs at his house. Then things got downright medieval. Torres says these are nails catapulted from a Gelco's truck onto his driveway. He hurled rocks. Torres is also suspicious of another incident where two different men smashed his car windows, although a Gelco has not been implicated. After calling police 40 times that year, Torres finally got a restraining order. Agelka was arrested for criminal mischief and stalking and is currently awaiting trial. So we decided to try and ask Agelka himself why he has such hostility for his neighbors. Hi, Mr. Agelka. How are you? My name is Matt Gutman. I'm from ABC News. Okay. Nice to meet you. I'm not interested in coming up. But I have a, just a couple of questions. Your neighbors say that you've been terrorizing them. I wonder if you have any answers for them. You're backing out. We we'll just have a couple of questions for you, sir. You're not interested? Agelko's Maybe lawyer has said his client was also a victim in this neighborhood feud. So what is the best recourse for a community under siege by one of its own? When you get to that point where you've tried reasoning with someone, you've tried being friendly, you've done everything, if you need to fight fire with fire and you can do it in a socially responsible, lawful manner, I say go for it. For this South Florida community, peace may only come after they've had their day in court.